just, you know, you got to be passionate about what you do. You know, we can even turn this episode into a a complete episode about passion because genuinely, like, like I've learned a lot of things throughout just being in business and doing stuff and passion is the driving force of, of quality and the driving force of just, you know, very important pieces of building a successful business. Welcome back to Real Big Sister. <laughs> it's just chatting. We are, so, we're doing an urgent just chatting. So this is the thing. So when we we have a we have a very lenient process here at the podcast. We come up with episodes, <clears throat> topics. We talk about them on and the then fly. Just, we we you know me and Andy are really close. We're good friends, so we kind of know what each other is thinking. But sometimes. You know, it's that new school versus that old school shit. You know what I mean? And like, I'll come up with these ideas for topics which have a lot of meaning to them. A lot of meaning and, and you know, like it's thought provoking. And he'll, he will be going through it and he'll read it and go, oh, <laughs> he'll be, oh what, what does this mean? It's, the, it's that new school shit. Plus, when I look up stuff. Well, I am, I am 44. Yes. So everybody knows. <laughs> but for the record, Yo, this For the record, I'm biologically 28. The service guy that works on my vehicle, we were, he's kind of into fitness. I was like, hey, did you get your hormones checked out? He's 31 or 30 years old. M- my levels were better than his. Well, I mean. But he's in way better shape than me, which was crazy. Like, I was like 30 points higher than him because we were like comparing. He's mm-hmm. like, what? And I was like, in my mind, I'm like. I, it's got to be a lifestyle thing because I don't. I think he does like stuff, drink, and whatever. Yeah, but I don't. So I think maybe it might got to be a lifestyle thing, supplements, whatever. But like I was like 30, I'm 15 years older than this, 14 years older than this person. And my, so that's what I say biologically, but my mind is, my mind is still a 44. You know what I've been doing recently? I found a red wine that I really like. I don't drink a lot. Saldo? I, no, it's the prisoner. I don't drink That's, a lot. So, so, ah, ah. So, uh, uh, no, 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 no. Wait, no, no, I, no, want, no. I want to, I want to preface hold, this. Hold the bus. <laughs> Saldo wine. Let's talk about Saldo wine. Wait, can I preface what I was saying? Saldo first? wine was created by the same people that made the prisoner. Okay, yeah. And the person, uh, the guy that I'm friendly with at a watch dealer, um, he's he used to own a wine boutique, mm-hmm. very knowledgeable in watches. But he could, just we were talking about um, his former business, which was wine. Yeah, and he was explaining about the prisoner and Saldo mm-hmm. were extremely special wines. Yeah, the prisoner. So okay, so I, I want to preface what I'm saying. I don't drink a lot. I, I actually have certain nights throughout the year where I do go out and I have a really good time, but I don't like drink often. And so I've been wanting to not get into wine. I, I don't want to get into wine like a connoisseur or whatever, sommelier, whatever, some, what, so, sommelier, sommelier. sommelier, whatever. Sommelier. <laughs> I just, I, I had wine sommelier. at a dinner, a nice dinner. I had a, a glass of wine and I really liked it. And I was like, you know what? I would enjoy having a nice glass of red wine at the end of the day, Uh, you know, whatever. I need to find a wine that I enjoy so that in my crib, I can just put up a couple bottles and I can have that for those, those, just those nights, those Thursday, Friday nights, whatever it may be, Mm -hmm. where I can take a couple sips and enjoy myself. I tested out a bunch of different wines. It was fucking expensive. I was like, just, I didn't know how else to try it. Um, And I bought, I got this bottle, the, the prisoner. Yeah. It's a red blend. And it is phenomenal. I mean, honestly, I've brought it to parties. I've brought it to, you know, gatherings with my family. And I've literally gotten questions. Where did you get this? How did you find it? It's a phenomenal drink. It's a, phen- a phenomenal wine. Um, I don't know where I was going with that. But yeah, we, I got into wine and I love this wine. Do you drink wine? No. So what I wanted to talk about was... <laughs> what I wanted to talk about was... When yeah, somebody, we're originally old school versus new school. So, so, so Saldo, Saldo, um, and the prisoner was created by a group that was extremely passionate about the craft. So I didn't know this stuff, so it's good. It's this is nice the same thing with cars. So, like performance exotic vehicles. Let's take the brand Pagani. They're paying attention to detail down to the bolt 
the bolt. And it says Pagani on the head of the bolt, I believe. They're down to the bolt. The dashboard, the dashboard is of jewelry quality. The, the stitching is perfection. So specifically, we're talking about the Pagani Huayra. The Huayra. I don't know if I'm saying the right. Huayra. H. Huayra. The Pagani Huayra. 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 The founder is Horacio Pagani. But the quality, when we went to our trip down in Florida, we stopped at Prestige Motorsports. And they had the couple there. They were beautiful. Just the it's just seeing it in person, the Pagani Waira. It's something else. It, it's a piece of art. It's insane. It's you gotta see it, and then you'll understand why it commands a price point that it does. It's which is in the millions uh, for one Pagani Waira. But it it is the peak. It's the peak of craftsmanship and quality. So what I'm trying to get at is Saldo and the Prisoner Wine. That group, I'm not a connoisseur. I don't know this shit. I just know that from people I talk to that are really into it, they said that they were extremely passionate. Well, you can tell. Yeah. I mean, it's a phenomenal wine. It yeah. really is. So if you put passion into your product, passion into a service that if you're passionate about what you do and you you let that follow through to what the, res the end result is, then people will appreciate what you do a little bit more. You know, like for yeah. example, like like me, I'm extremely passionate to the point where it makes me crazy, where I want to see our projects succeed. Like I have to, if they don't succeed, I go crazy. I need to figure out what, what button, what module, what thing do I need to adjust to make sure that my client is doubling, tripling, quadrupling. That's the thing that's really important to me that I get almost like manic about it. Yeah. I have to see progress or I start to stress the yeah. fuck out. So like, that's the, I like to see business progress, business growth. That's what gets me going. Boom, 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 boom. So with Pagani, their, their passion is performance, quality, craftsmanship. And when you see one of those vehicles in person or hear it, oh, holy shit. So forget about the price tag. Just. Like, like, for example, like Nox the, 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 like the crazy. Like, like, like I like, I, I'm drawn first into design, the design, the look, the feel, the aggression of the lines, the engine, the performance, even it comes down to watches. I like the design. I like contrast. Those are the things that catch my attention. Then when I look further, deeper, and I see the quality design first, quality craftsmanship, I'm like, okay. People are absorbing all of this during the experience, interacting with your brand, your product, your service. So it's every little step from initial, the sight of it, drawing you in. They look, they inspect, they observe, and then they see, oh, wow, this, is, this isn't just a regular car. Not at all. Yeah, so yeah, that you no. see, when you see the back hatch open and you can see all the exposed rear suspension, and the contrast of the yellow springs up against, like, say, the silver uh, shaft. Just every piece just has all a the, thought to it. Just the, and then the control arms and the, the 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 bolt and the control arm looks so clean and so beautiful. And just the the engine and the intake manifold and everything about it. Just every piece of it has <laughs> like going down the every road. Every piece of it's it has just so thought beautiful. It. So yeah. if you're a car guy like me you can appreciate these things and you're like wow and it's just down to the t everything is perfect mm -hmm. but you it, it, you don't have to go crazy with your business but just remember if you're in an industry that you're not passionate about get out of it just you know That's you got to be passionate about what you do you know we can even turn this episode into a, a complete episode about passion because genuinely like like i've learned a lot of things throughout just being in business and doing stuff and passion is the driving force of, of quality and the driving force of just, you know, very important pieces of building a successful business. I, I've, t if you guys have watched this episode from the beginning, I mean, I've always said, find a passion 
monetize that passion not in a bad way don't don't you know take out the quality and think about all that shit these businesses that he's explaining are businesses built off of an extreme passion for for something and, and it's created this craftsmanship like the wine like you know pagani you know and there's you can find any business in practically any industry that is built off passion and those businesses are normally looked up to and you know sought after um so it's just you know that that could be a whole episode is an episode in itself truly yeah and you can tell when somebody cut, cuts corners now one thing on the flip side if you're passionate about an industry but you're putting way too much into it and you're not selling to a market that can afford it that passion mm -hmm. the output of that passion like for example if you built like say the pagani wire i don't want to get into their costs i don't know what their costs are but the level of craftsmanship you know that it's it's definitely more expensive than a Toyota. You all know this. I so mean, yeah, yeah. So just from you know, they have the. Um, Imagine going up to someone who just doesn't know and saying, "What car do you think is more expensive, this or this?" And they're like, "That'd be pretty funny." You get some guys. <laughs> like, I'd rather have a Supra. Yeah. <laughs> You always get those guys on the car forums in the chats. <laughs> Supra! At JDM this is, Hold on. Hold on, my child. <laughs> this is a Pagani Wyra. A Pagani <laughs> who? <laughs> it's a Pagani He's at that car Wyra. with the ghost. Nah, dude, I'd rather have a... I'd rather have the Supra. You know, oh, oh, Fer Ferrari. Let's talk about Ferrari a little bit. Okay. You're old school. I'm new school. I really like the two. If I could get my hands on a Mansory, no. Oh no, Mansory eight twelve. Oh, mm. I'm gonna bite my tongue on oh. this. One. I'm not gonna. That's new school, bro. Ah. Oh my god, that. Ah. I'm just gonna make a noise. Ah. Yo, but you'd rather have the the the. Uh, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. What was the name of the design company? Perf uh, what was it called? Just. So everybody knows, I believe in 2015 or so, the company went public. A lot of people don't, uh, a lot of people don't realize this. So I had a couple of friends said, oh, I thought they were still private. So yes, they are a public company now. And the, me personally, my opinion, I really, really liked when they were partnered with the design group called Pinaferina. Pinaferina, yeah. Pinaferina. Pinaferina. You can see the logo. There's a cool logo for Pinafrin. So they were partnered up with them and they were coming up with the really cool designs. Um, some of the designs that they, I think they, they also, they did the Testarossa, um, uh, the um, F12 Berlinetta, the 360, the 430, the 458. Now, the Pinaferina designs, to my understanding, in my memory, is the Pinaferina designs stopped at the 458, the Ferrari 458, Speciale, the Italia, eh, the Challenge, whatever. Um, those stopped. Since then, the designs have been in-house Ferrari design, which they're still nice looking and everything like that, but I just, in my opinion, I would love to see Pinaferina come back because the, just the, the the vibe of those designs. I don't know. I don't know. If I it's agree. A, I, I don't I, know if it's a subconscious thing. I agree with you I, I, when I, you I, say that. But my thought process is like, if I have the opportunity to buy that or the A12, the Mansory A12, I'm going for that fucking Mansory A12 all day long. This thing is a piece of artwork. This, you know, you know what it is for me. So the 2017 F12 Berlinetta. I'm Ferrari looking at a TikTok video, the by the way. last one, oh. to my understanding and memory, it's the last Penaferina design. I, 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 I think that's a beautiful, if you're gonna get a front engine Ferrari, that's like the last one that I would even entertain. That's a really, really nice, um, classic, iconic front engine Ferrari. When I, we're, we're separating the mid engines. Putting those over here for a second, but for a front engine one, if I would, even though the 812 is newer, it's a bigger flex. 
I'm more of a classic, not meaning I only like old things. I'm more of like a classic. You just appreciate it more. Iconic. Yeah. Like I would drive a Testarossa, no problem. I don't care if it's from 1988. I'll rip that bitch up. Yeah, well, that's you. You pref- Yeah, that's your preference. But, that's, but, yeah. but some car guys drive certain models for different reasons that I'm not going to get into. But if you're truly passionate, if you're really a gearhead and you love performance and you love iconic vehicles, it doesn't matter if that model is seven to 10 to 20 years old or, th- or more, you'll still, you'll still whip that car and you'll run, you'll run it and be proud and you'll maintain it. And we were down in Florida <laughs> doing some business and this guy painted his diffuser, the rear diffuser, just to the folks at home that might not know what this is. If you look at the back of a Ferrari F430 and you look at the and below the bumper, there is a either a carbon fiber or a dark space gray colorish um, uh, portion of the lower bumper that has lines on it, almost like fins. Those serve a purpose. It's called the rear diffuser. It's supposed to assist with the, the grounding and the downforce and all that stuff related to race cars. This, it's supposed to either come in carbon fiber Please show some pictures. It either comes in carbon fiber or this space gray metallic. This mother <laughs> painted it. What was it? Yellow? Yeah. Yeah. It was all yellow. He painted it yellow. You son of a bitch. Don't go overboard with customization of exotics because it just cheeses it out. It, everything you do is ch- just, it's cheese, 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 more cheese on the cheese and let's melt cheese. Let's sprinkle more cheese on that cheese that you melted on the cheese. Thank you so much for joining us today on Real Business Roundtable. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed today's episode. Pretty sporadic, last minute. You know, we're just going to throw up some of these episodes once in a while just because why not? Thank uh, you. We appreciate you. Please like, subscribe, turn on post notifications. Check us out on Instagram. Peace out.